So, Mike, you'd hope that Will might be able to be uh, on the field today. Is, is, is he going to be able to practice? And, and how do you try to you know, keep easing him back in to check his mobility? Uh, by practice. You know, I mean, I think that he will be able to um, do this. Teron, here you go. Check that again. You got a text, so kicked out of there. Get you guys fighting amongst yourselves. Um, he'll, he'll, by practice, and I think that's why uh, practice still is always going to be important to be able to evaluate where guys are health-wise, and also from a, a you know an understanding of what we're supposed to be doing in, in all three phases. And you know, again, it's it's important, and I'm excited about getting out here and practicing. You think you'll be able to do some team stuff? Uh, well, there'll be limited team stuff today, but I would imagine that there'll be some. You know, some passing game stuff that's a speed, and, you know, hope that he can do that. I guess five guys, a practice squad. What's the process like getting those guys incorporated? And yeah, that started uh, as soon as they signed. You know, as soon as they signed, being able to meet with us and the coaches and uh, getting them up to speed as quickly as possible. We, we always talk that, you know, it doesn't matter how you ended up here. You know, the only thing that matters is what you do while you're here. Um, you know, we've gotten guys ready to play. You know, some of those guys may, may, um, you know, be you know available this week and may you know get an opportunity. You've had guys here that are closing in on some personal milestones like Hopkins and Henry both getting close to a thousand yards. Landry could get double digit sacks. How important would you like to see for I mean for those guys to be able to accomplish those personal milestones? Well, I think that that's always um, you know they're, 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 we're in this uh, for the team and, and we're in this to to win win championships but also along the way you know you have to have individual success players have to make plays uh, offensively defensively and on special teams so with that personal success uh, we get enough of it you know it can lead to to the, the success of the team and so you know would hope that those guys can can get everything that they want and the you know within what we're trying to do um, you know, I think that there's always a balance there we're making sure that they're doing the things that, you know, help them be successful, whether it be this year or, you know, in the past, and, and making sure that they're not doing things outside of what the scheme is that could ultimately affect the team. But I don't think any of those players, you know, I hope that they all, you know, have great games and can achieve whatever it is that they're they're looking to achieve. Especially with Harold, how much is it? How good has it been to kind of see him hit his stride here over the last six, seven ball games? Well, I just think that he's feeling, you know, more comfortable. And again, every injury and every rehab and every, um, you know, everybody heals differently. You know, things, you know, some guys take less time, some guys take more time. And, you know, again, I just think that it's been good to see him. He's been out there every day, he's been working, and uh, he's been with us for a lot. So you want good things to happen to, to people like Harold. Is it maybe to go get people off somebody else's practice squad than it appears sometimes in that they'll get promoted by their team or, or maybe decide to stay and get, mm -hmm. get a raise and decide to stay. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of those uh, situations that happen this time of year. You know, when we take somebody off somebody's practice squad, uh, we're required to keep them uh, for a minimum of, of, of three weeks on the active roster. Uh, some teams do, you know, we've, We've tried to do that in the past, and, and some teams will will promote uh, said player, um, maybe a veteran player that has you know a number of credited seasons that's on the practice squad that may ultimately get called up to a, a playoff team, um, may stay. There's a lot of different scenarios, and I think that a lot of those depend on the individual player, uh, what he's done in, in his career, what he wants to do, the opportunity uh, that may be presented, um, whether it's here or or somewhere else. What goes into the thought process with those decisions when you decide to add somebody to position versus trust the depth you have on the practice squad? Well, one, you? we didn't have any depth on the practice squad. When you had five guys, the depth is somewhat limited. Um, sometimes it's a player that uh, has played, you know, has played in the past and is uh, you know what you would call a veteran player um, versus a, a younger player that may be on the practice squad that you're still um, developing, working, 
with and, and still want to move forward with but may not be ready uh, for the game. Left tackle position, how does that look for you, you know, with um, Jalen Duncan in the wrist and then Dillard getting his time? How does that look for you this week? Well, I think it's too early to tell. Um, you know, I thought Dre finished the game well and you know, expect more from Jalen. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of work through the week and kind of see how that goes and, you know, we'll try to come up with a decision that we think is, is best for the team. And then, you know, everybody that's, you know, up on, on the game day roster um, has to be ready to play. I know this Reese, you had a follow up, please? Yeah, thank you. Is that change that was strictly due to injury? No, it was just, a, you know, I mean, whether it's injury or performance or a decision that, you know, I made, it just was, you know, felt like we could get more from that position. How did Otis do in his snaps on, on defense? Well, um, you, you know, I think there was, again, Otis plays with uh, with the speed and the violence that I appreciate. We asked him, um, you know, to use his hands on kickoff coming out of last week. Uh, he went down there, was involved in a double team, used his hand, shed at, uh, I think, the last kickoff that we had and, and made the tackle. Um, you know, he, he ran and made some good tackles. He chased the football. Um, had a really, really nice play over on our sidelines. Came from a long way away. Great angle, great speed, and, you know, held him to, like, two yards. So, uh, and then there were some, you know, some drops and some details, and I'm like, we, we'll figure all that out. And I promise you the most important thing right now is that that you play with an effort, a violence, a speed, you take the coaching and you know we'll get some of the details that we'll have to have this week uh, cleaned up. How do you monitor Will Levis this week and trying to see if he plays on Sunday? Anything extra that goes into it, Coach, when you talk about his physical play and maybe learning from past experiences of how to maybe slide or do things that aren't... He, he, he dove, he slid, he protected himself the last time we, we played the Texans. And he dove forward and got us five yards, and we had a half a yard. And so I rewarded him by, by going forward on, on fourth and uh, a half a yard. So, you know, we're, we're not going to, um, yeah, we're not going to restrict these guys to, you know, playing outside of how they are wired to play. And um, it's an instinctive game. You know, there's sometimes the pocket breaks down if you're a quarterback and you have to be able to move and avoid, protect the football. And ultimately, we would like you to do the best that you could to, to protect yourself, especially at that position. Um, but there also is a, you know, a responsibility that you have to try to, you know, help the team on the field and score a touchdown or convert on, on a third down. What do you uh, like about I what Marlon Davidson's given you so far? Uh, you know, it's a player that um, has come in and, and, and you know bided his time and worked. I thought he got in, in good shape while he was here, and the, the details and the technique, and um, took advantage of his opportunity. And uh, so now he's earning more opportunity. And I like like coaching him and, and enjoy having him around. How did it with the tackle eligible role he had Sunday, and does that merit maybe more work going Yeah, forward? I think it does. You know, I think it does, at least going forward. Um, there was certainly an excitement uh, and a willingness to want to wanna go play. Saw him, you know, trying to finish, and you know, it was a new opportunity for him. So there was, you know, there's some mistakes and, and things that we will have to coach and clean up. But you know, usually when you saw the end of the pile, he was there, Raider was there, or, or, or Ruppy was there, so that's a good start. Mike, when you brought guys either up from the practice squad or in off the street, you've had a lot of success getting them ready to play in just a short amount of time. What do you attribute that to? A simplified approach, or how does how does that work for you? Well, I think one, it's always you know it's always on the player, right? Well, we're going to give you as much as you can handle, and you know the role that you have each week. I think our coaches do, you know, I do a very good job of of getting those guys ready. Uh, and then also, you know, trying to, to put them in a role that will, you know, be consistent with what they know. We don't want to put them in a bad position, you know, that, you know, is forcing them to do something that maybe they didn't learn over the course of, of three or four days. You've got 16 on IR now. 
Is there anything different about the injuries this year? Is there any different feel to kind of the injuries? I, I think they probably are. I mean, they're just, you know, some of these IR, you know, uh, you know, we got into a situation where we had to make a decision on, you know, I talked about this the other day or yesterday when, you know, maybe it would have been a couple weeks, but, you know, if you weren't available this week, we, we needed the roster spot. So, you know, we've got some MCLs in there and, you know, uh, I'll try to do my best to continue to evaluate that, um, you know, the health of the team. I think that's obviously always something that's critical, um, you know, but, you know, when, you, when you're talking about some, some MCLs or, you know, AC spray, or whatever, you know, things that occur during a, during a football game, a very violent game, you know, it's hard to account for, for some of those things when guys fall into Jeff's knee or Armani's knee, just using those, you know, as an example. So you feel like that's maybe not as bad as it's been the last couple of years? No, I mean, any, any injury is bad. You know what I mean? Any, any injury, any time we, we lose a player, um, you know, it affects the team. And so, you know, we'll, we'll have to obviously look at those things and continue to, to do it. But that's why we have, you know, a practice squad and, and guys that can come in there and step in. And, you know, it's it's never great when you lose players. It's, you know, something that, you know, you'll have to deal with uh, through the course of the season. Um, and trying to get them as, as ready to play. And then when injuries do occur, um, you know, that we all have a great responsibility to, to get the player back as, as quickly as possible. You touched on it yesterday walking off. How do you manage the week with a shorthanded team and, and group of young guys and, and vets as well, trying to get everybody, get some speed work in? And, and yeah, we'll work. get some of that early on with some guys that have uh, um, not played a lot of football for us. and. Where we've been the last couple of weeks, you know, really not being able to do a lot of speed. Um, we'll, we'll try to get some work in there, and then we'll see where things are tomorrow. With Tajay uh, Spears and the kick return, I, I guess it was what a couple of weeks ago you took him off of that unit. What was behind that, and do you plan on using him in that way again? Uh, I mean, I think Tajay's you know valuable um, player, just like everybody else, and. You know, just made a decision. You know, some of these kickers that were playing, you know, they they have the ability to you know, put the ball in a lot of different places and you know make it advantageous for their coverage. You know, the hang time, and you see us kind of trending towards, uh, you know, just fair catching it and and putting it on the twenty-five. Uh, watch position instead of under, in, under center. It's tough. I mean, it's tough wanting to be out there and play. Uh, and watching everyone else, but I mean, it's still fun. It's a different perspective. Obviously, I had that for you know first half or so of the season. Um, but when you're not even suited up or whatever, it's a little different. But trying to find ways just to you know be a good teammate and uh, cheer the guys on. But um, you know, definitely would rather be playing and looking to get back to playing here soon. Oh, yeah, well, it's coming along. It's good. It's coming along well. Doing everything I can to get it back. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see how this week goes. But um, taking it day by day. What's the, what have the days been like for you as far as rehabbing and, and, and still studying and trying to get everything done? Yeah, I mean, it's continuing to just prepare as if I, I was playing and um, keeping the same mindset regardless of the situation. Uh, it's tough, but I mean, the time in the training room obviously takes away from, from the other time that you usually have, but I mean, that's part of the game. It's part of the sacrifices you have to make. And um, yeah, I mean, just continuing to work with these guys to, to get me ready as soon as possible. How important do you think it is to play a couple more games you know, this season? I, yeah, I just want to play ball. I mean, I just want to go out there and win games and get a, leave the season with a good taste in our mouth, you know. Um, we've had some tough losses and looking to just get the little things corrected, especially, you know, playing a, a team this week that we just played two weeks ago. You don't get that a lot, so that's interesting. Um, but opportunity to really kind of put a new version of us on tape versus that same defense, which is uh, going to be exciting. Is it all pain tolerance at this point, or is there anything specific that you can't do yet or that you want to prove that you can do? Uh, I'd say it's mostly just pain tolerance, yeah. There's a part of you wants to go head-to-head -head with Stroud. Looks like he may be on the verge of coming back this week. Is there a part of you that wants to go head-to-head -head with another member of the 2023 draft class like you did with Bryce Young? Yeah, I'd love to compete with him. I mean, he's a heck of a player and um, never got to compete against him in college. And uh, watching him from afar and what he's been able to do has been really impressive. So, um, 
you know, hopefully he's, he's getting better here soon, and it would be a lot of fun to compete against him. Well, how much does it help with your limited preparation than this week and having just played them two weeks ago? If you have to miss some things in the training room, does that help that you, everything's still kind of fresh in your mind? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny, like even just with the one week in between, it's like you can get your wires crossed. Like, oh, this is how Seattle's playing it and, and how we want to, you know, either ID things or, or do whatever. But it's important to be able to get your mind back set in the, in the right space. But it is a lot more fresh because it is just two weeks ago. Um, and uh, it doesn't mean that it's any less preparation, though. Well, we talked before about how DeAndre inspires you to elevate your game, but how much has he been a common influence on you? Just like having that veteran, that guy who's seen it all, been through it all, how much has that been like common for you? It's been cool. I mean, um, it's been cool in that just, just who he is and, and what he's been able to do and that he must see something in me to really care and, and um, try to pour into me. So um, I try to take everything I can from him, and we're continuing to build our relationship. And I feel like it's just gotten stronger and stronger throughout the weeks. And you know, hopefully, finish off these these next couple of weeks feeling really, really good about um, our chemistry as well as you know everyone else's. And you have you have like that high energy personality. He's such a chill, nonchalant guy. Like, you ever have moments where you're like, "Come on, man, get hyped with me." You know, hey, I mean, those types. Yeah, I mean, that's his type. You know, you got to see how dudes are wired, and and you know approach it appropriately and you know he's definitely one of those dudes that it's not going to do any good to get in his face and scream at him you know but um you got to just you know massage the relationship and understand kind of what's the best way to get through someone and, and with him it's probably the best thing is having a you know level-headed one-on-one conversation about what's going on obviously sometimes emotions are flying and things can get a little higher um but you know you got to just maintain the relationship the best way possible you obviously understand it very well and that guys are different and being around football teams your whole life have come to understand that. Are there ever moments where you wonder how somebody could be like that, just based on how you are? Like, how could a guy be that calm when it's so exciting and? Yeah, I think we all fall into that with anything in our lives or any opinions we have. Like, how does this person think about it this way when I do? But um, that's just the beauty of the of this world and the game, and just how everyone's different. And it's the job of you know the leaders to understand how they are different, and then in turn how to respond and how to approach them to, to get the most out of them, the best out of them. Um, so something I'm continuing to try to do and better myself at um, and looking to focus on here these next weeks, two weeks especially. Well, I know this is the first time obviously playing in the NFL and division opponents. Do you relish the opportunity of playing spoiler at all in these situations with Houston and the Jags down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, now that uh, you know we're eliminated from playoff contention, we talk about different ways to motivate us, and that's definitely one. Um, I, I, I just want to win games, and um, I'm not as much excited about knocking them out as I am as just winning a football game. And if, that's definitely a little bit of extra motivation, but um, we're going out there to, to put our best ball on tape and to, and to come back with a win. Um, you know that wins that we haven't had as, uh, as much as we'd like to this year. So if we are able to swing it, you know, finish off these next couple weeks with some wins, it makes us feel a whole lot better about everything. Have you ever had a, a tight job, I guess, as extensive as the one I guess we saw on <laughs> Friday? And, and, and was that, I guess, to kind of give the whole leg stability there? Yeah, it was, just, it was for my knee. I was still feeling a little uneasiness there, but um, uh, tried to tape it up in a way so that I could, you know, move around a little better, but, uh, you know, didn't end up you know, finishing that day, but these guys, they got all sorts of tricks and stuff to for, make you forget about what hurts. So uh, I'm willing to try anything. Well, you're obviously a really competitive guy and injuries are new to you, but have you had to figure out how to navigate any heightened pressure in this format, in this league, and coming back from the injury and going about it in the recommended timeline? Yeah, I think it's tough to come back to the field and, and play with a different energy, like knowing that you're you're hurt. Like it's hard to play differently and, and have that in the back of your mind. It, it, you, I feel like you can't play that way. You know, you, you got to be able to just go full tilt um, regardless of what's going on or else you get yourself and your teammates hurt. So, um, you know, there's pain. Everyone's got pain at this point in the season. Everyone's dealing with something. Uh, you kind of just got to put it behind you and, and play as if you're not hurt. How much have you been able to, I guess, learn week over week just being a rookie in this league and how much does that, I guess, like make you itch to get back that much more of like, what could I be learning? How could I be growing in, in these games? Yeah, I think a lot of the growth I've made has just been through mistakes and, you know, good things I've done on the field and just 
with the mistakes, li- trying to limit them and not have them pop up again. I've done a decent job of that, I think. So seeing the growth from week to week is exciting, and then to miss out on that growth for a week um, is disappointing. But um, like I said, these two weeks are really, really important. We want to get these wins and, and, and get out of this season, you know, feeling feeling good about how we finished it and, and on an uptrend going into next year. Um, and for me, that's important with me and my game. But just got to continue trusting my process and uh, taking advantage of the reps I get. Last one. How much different did the game look from the sideline last week compared to those first six weeks? Like having played in games now, were you seeing things from the sideline that you think you maybe wouldn't have seen those first couple of games? Yeah, I mean, I was definitely more in tune to just the pictures and kind of what was going on and what we were looking at and what we were facing and why it wasn't working or why it was working. And then it's just staying in tune with what we're thinking game plan wise. Um, I just feel like my football IQ has increased and with that, my understanding of everything that's going on is um, gotten deeper, which is makes the game more fun to watch.